guys, welcome back to Tom Mods Things. Uh, today we are working again on uh, Project Max Power 106. Uh, I've got tons of stuff to update you on, plus a load of new parts that we're going to fit in this video as well. So without further ado, let's crack on and get on with it. Alright, well, first things first, I guess we'll give you a quick update into exactly what we've been doing on the interior. Right, I guess first things first is to show the interior, what I've been up to. So some of you that follow my Instagram channel will have seen some of these bits already, but we have been putting all of the interior back in the 106 with obviously some uh, period correct modded goodness. So uh, we've gone through, we've redone all the sort of shroud and everything, uh, got all the dolls all mounted up, everything's all working now um, across the board. Got this uh, Momo uh, st <laughs> steering wheel, uh, very period correct 90s uh, styling on this with the sort of, uh, yeah, this stuff going on. Um, but I think it looks right at home in here. Uh, so yeah, painted the shrouds down here, uh, started to do the centre console, uh, got a few bits here to finish up. Uh, we've also got the centrepiece coming through here for the centre console as well. Uh, gear stick and everything, gator and everything all mounted in properly. Um, I think we are going to potentially attempt, because we haven't and I'll move on to this exactly why, but um, the light and the little Clifford switch um, isn't working or required on this little one down here anyway. So uh, what we could do is try and swap it out for a spare one that I've got. Uh, we just need to make sure that this one's nice and clean, but it also has no holes in the bottom. So uh, we can get that all mounted in, but that's for a another time. Got the little Peugeot thing. Now this is quite cool because I didn't actually, um, I, I don't know what models these came in, but usually they have like the Zest or the, I don't know, Independence or whatever they call them for the different models. But because it's an XS, um, it just has Peugeot across, which is nice. So anyway, pop that out, painted it as well. Uh, as I said, gonna paint some of these bits too. Um, bits along here, just gonna try and get this sort of square piece so it kind of matches the rounded edges on here as well. So we'll have it come straight through. And then some of you will notice we have this little bad boy down here as well. Uh, so this is now the push start for the for the car so uh, that leads me on to the next thing which is to do with this mess here we go fuel pump on engine start Cheers. boom and then we are straight up and running again awesome and then it's just key out the ignition everything back off again fuel pump off job done so those of you that followed previous episode will know that I was absolutely struggling with the Clifford alarm system that used to be installed on this uh, we we're having numerous problems where I'd gone to get this finished for an MOT and unfortunately for whatever reason it decided that the um, starter motor didn't want to start anymore oh, okay fine for whatever reason that wanted to go out of focus um so yeah so what we were doing is we went through all of the loom um, pulled everything out and then we effectively as you can see here with some of the the taped over pieces and the uh, pieces of heat shrink all over we effectively just made the decision to strip out the whole um old clifford g4 system so took the whole thing out from here as well as which is why these bits are painted as well um all of the ignition um, wires and stuff were all on show because they obviously uh, splice it into that as well so we took all of this apart we've taken all of that out um, but we still ran into the issue where we couldn't get the starter mode to kick in uh, so effectively what we did for that in the end uh, because I was trailing around and as, you, as some of you that follow the channel for a little while know that the electric, electrical side of cars is, is absolutely one of my absolute banes absolutely hate it um, so was trying to find basically the simplest quickest route forward for that um, I called around a few people some people gave me some good suggestions about what it could be um, but never really managed to really get to the end of it what I think is probably the case is that there is a, uh, a split wire somewhere um, in the loom or there's something funny going on where one wire is still into another but I can't find it unless I pull out the whole dash can't be asked to do that so uh, what we've done for the moment is I have tested the starter motor uh, by bridging the uh, live and the trigger wire again um, and uh, maybe I just wasn't doing it correctly before but I've done it this time and it has uh, kicked into life so uh, it started running again which means that everything else is working on the car the ECU is running and all the rest of the little bits um, are all kind of working as they should be uh, fuel pumps obviously going because we've got it off of a, um, uh, a switch now on the front rather than actually going through the uh, through putting the key in and, and turning the ignition so 
uh, yeah, that all worked, which means that as you just saw a minute ago with the engine start, now what we have done is that is now our sort of uh, basically <laughs> ignored the rest of the loom where that split could be, all those cables are spliced into each other like they shouldn't be. Um, and we've just run a new separate wire straight into a 40 amp switch um, and then taken that straight to the, the trigger wire and uh, it now kicks over, which is great. So it means that we can put the key in the ignition, turn it on to get all the ECU and all the dials and everything else to work correctly. Um, and then we just push start it with the fuel pump on and then it's uh, job done, which is uh, which is really cool. So that means we're, we're past that sticking point now which is uh, which which was a big thing for me um, I don't know whether I've actually shown some of these other bits in the interior so I'll just flip you around uh, so yeah so then other bits that we looked at as well is we painted all of these bits as, uh, and put all this back together again so this is now all mounted in properly ready for our sunroof to properly work we've got uh, painted door handles these were absolutely minging so uh, we got those all sorted oh yeah and then um, finally we also uh, put all the door cards back together again if it wants to focus in which it doesn't seem to uh, there we go um, really simple for the moment uh, we've just got yeah black door cards um, and then we just painted the handle silver just for the moment what we are probably going to do is we're going to take uh, definitely this bottom piece off um, and this bit as well and then we are going to custom fabricate a lower piece to have like multiple speakers running all the way along so what I'd like is to have maybe four uh, six and a half inch speakers probably dotted through with some tweeters and stuff mounted in up here because uh, we haven't got electrical mirrors or anything like that so anyway um, and then what we're going to do is because we stripped out and ripped out all the old mountings for all of these uh, relays and stuff is I'm going to get some uh, composite panel and then we're going to sort of just make a, a bent piece and then cut some holes in it and some mounting positions so this all kind of fits in uh, to the back and then we'll just get a fascia piece that goes over the top because uh, we don't really have to worry about glove box because we're not really going to use it as a glove box as such because I think this is probably where we're going to end up putting PlayStation in and stuff for uh, the flip out monitor on the front which needs to be fully mounted in uh, and then also for the TVs and stuff which we're looking to put in in the uh, back of the car uh, which is currently just full of stuff uh, fenders mainly um, so that is really all of this so I'll crack on and show you exactly what we've picked up and the things that we're going to fit in this video right, and those of you that have followed the previous videos before will know that this is now what the engine bay is looking like um, obviously there are certain things which we're going to be adding into here just to tidy it up a little bit as we progress through the uh, the build um, but in essence what I've been doing is I've been going through and you can see with the additional blue wire here which is the one that runs straight to the um, uh, the starter motor is it's looking a little bit messy so um, it's looking a hell of a lot better than it did uh, all of this has all been tidied up and, and all the fans and everything are all, all new and it's kind of looking a lot better than it, it was the rusty thing that I picked up uh, to begin with but it could definitely be a lot better so uh, things that we're going to be picking up is a chrome cover for the battery chrome cover for the uh, fuse box and the ECU as well uh, and then this bit used to be where the hot air intake sat the horrible green thing that was sat in there before uh, now we had that previous one that I showed but the problem we had with that was these massive holes here um, in essence where the comb filter would kind of sit around here uh, was in the perfect spot for water to come in straight through the bonnet and straight onto the filter which obviously isn't great um, and then there was uh, some issues with the pipes that we didn't really have the right sizes and stuff so uh, what we've gone and picked up which is another standard eBay special is uh, a couple of bits we can go through so I believe we are ignoring this one on oh no this is the one actually so um, filter wise gone and picked up a, a fully sort of enclosed filter um, to try and basically stop the uh, water ingress so uh, we've got this chrome boy that's going to sit on the front uh, this is then the filter we're going to ignore which is the one that came with it and then we've got a uh, load of universal chrome pipes which I'm hoping fingers crossed we can mash something together with these bits um, as well as this filter as well and then I don't know maybe the other piece that I had as well and uh, we can push something together to make it work on this car so that is the first bit to get chucked on uh, then additionally we've picked up another switch so these are the switches that we use underneath the uh, wing mirrors as you can see there which is what pops open the doors but what we do need on the back is something that's going to pop open the boot so what we are going to do is we are going to have one of these mounted 
which you can see just here so you would literally press that and it will pop the boot, boot open which will be pretty good as well um, as you can see we've started properly sanding down a lot of the flat spots at the moment just working through all of the bubbles and stuff including the roof um, trying to get it to a point where it's uh, gonna start to be ready I'm pretty sure I showed in the last video the indicators which are now located here on each side uh, so we've got one on this side and one on the other side and then all the lights are in properly now as well um, including the third brake light which as you can just see there sits up the top um, so that is all sorted uh, we've got number plates now which is cool so um, on this back one and can't really see it oh yeah there we go so down here uh, I've got our number plate number plate bracket right in the middle so this is actually a motorbike number plate bracket but it will work perfectly fine for this uh, so it comes with the light integrated and stuff as well which is perfect so we can slap a plate on there for driving around with some reflectors on it and bits and bobs and then um, when we get to a show and stuff we can take it off put a show plate on the back and then um, happy days it all kind of keeps all the back end all nice and clean so yeah so I think what we'll do now is we'll crack on with this be perfectly honest i was not expecting much presentation wise considering the uh, chinese uh, racingness of this particular thing but i just thought i'd show it because actually i was actually quite impressed um so they've got this kind of like blue felt um sort of backing piece that actually kind of has pockets for all of the bits i was expecting all of these just to kind of be loose in there but actually uh, all the pipe work kind of has a location which is uh, which is quite nice really um i mean i'm not gonna break these too highly because they're like uh, plastic v bands they're uh, probably pretty terrible for uh, anything maybe other than this i don't think we're really gonna have uh, enough pressure in this beast of a 1.6 to uh, to pop any of those off so yeah what we're gonna do now is uh, as i say we're gonna try and get this sort of situated down here probably um and then we're basically just gonna see if we can get some pipes together that will uh, allow us to fit this down here Right. there we go took a little bit of uh, jiggery pokery i'm not entirely happy with how this is up here but that's uh, i didn't have the correct reducers on me to take it from the um original uh throttle body uh through to the sort of the much larger pipe work but it looks like it kind of pretty much fits around everything um including the battery ideally i think what i will probably try and do is get this so it's a little bit more central um, but that's going to require doing a little bit of work um mainly around this area here with these sort of reducers um but i think compared to what was there before which just to give people that are just joining the channel a little bit of a reference um when i picked up the car it had this thing on there um, I mean there's no branding on it either so god knows where it came from um, and that was literally just stuck on there so as you can sort of see not the best of, uh, of air intakes really um, and this kind of I don't know looks a lot better um, I don't know whether it'll work any better to be honest uh, it's probably everyone will go oh it's really restrictive at the front um, but kind of comes in just above the intercooler so you do kind of have line of sight as you can see there straight into it so I don't know We'll see if it works. If it does, great. If not, then, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll work something else out. But it's never going to be a race car, is it, really? Um, despite everything having sport and race on it, much like the wiper blades, obviously, to uh, get all that race car brake horsepower. Um, but yeah, happy with this. I think it looks pretty cool. Once the chrome bits go on over here and over here as well, uh, really going to set it off. Going to try and see if I can find a new cap that will fit the um, oil cap because I don't like this. This is, I don't know, just pretty ugly. So if we can find, or if you guys know anyone that kind of makes a replacement of this, what I might just do for the moment is uh, spray it silver, much like I've done with. Uh, sort of all the interior parts and stuff as well and that kind of match it all up and then we'll get I think a cover for this brake reservoir as well because that's obviously fugly so um, we'll do that and then they do also do caps that go on the top of the struts but I mean we're just getting a little bit a little bit much now so uh, it's not really required for this bit and we're going to paint this uh, green dip stip uh, silver as well so it matches um, so yeah it uh, looks like it'll fit with kind of everything else as well so we can get that sort of nicely in there so yeah overall i think that's pretty damn good to be honest for a, a cheap kit i mean yeah it's all right it's cheap it goes on it looks nice so um happy days we'll move on to the next thing right and there we go that's what it looks like with this closed uh as we said before uh obviously it sits right underneath these vents but because this is now an enclosed filter uh should hopefully fingers crossed uh be much better suited to uh kind of being out 
in the open so once the mesh goes across here and stuff uh, obviously all this will be fairly hidden um, at that point but uh, yeah all coming together uh, another thing is we've put in down here um, the lock mechanism for the bonnet now so uh, obviously up and it now clicks into place which is great so um, uh, that's uh, a new thing which will be we'll need to get some sort of pull tie I think on this because at the moment I lean in here and you unclick it what I'll probably do is run a cable through kind of into the fender under here maybe or something or just out the side of the bumper just in front of it there'll be like a little pull thing which will then uh, unlock the bonnet and stuff uh, because I pulled out stupidly all of the old uh, mechanism for uh, it being up front but then we would have needed popper and stuff on here anyway because uh, the bonnet with all of this sort of uh, body filler and fiberglass work is a uh, hell of a lot heavier especially with this front bit um, a lot heavier than it was originally so it won't pop up um, like it does on the original ones so yes that's all that Right, and then a quick thing, obviously, uh, as it was all working again, thought we'd pull it out quickly, uh, get all the uh, doors up and stuff as well, so we can give you a kind of look around of exactly what's going on. So, out in the uh, sunlight, obviously, with the whole interior and stuff all on show. Uh, so, as you can see, looking pretty good out here. So, it shows the uh, Porsche seats that are in there as well, all looking pretty damn decent, all sort of set up and everything. And we've got all the interior uh, bits all together now as well. Uh, just got to get the gear gator all sorted. Um, but yeah, definitely coming together. Uh, still got to sort out, as I just said a minute ago, all of this stuff, and then we've got some of this wiring as well to uh, uh, tidy back up again, uh, which is why I was kind of taking it all apart, just to kind of find the wires that I needed to get the uh, front indicators to work. Um, and then as you can see with our new struts and everything in place, uh, get extremely close to, uh, to where they need to be. Um, but yeah, all working as intended, which is good. And then you see our little pod filter out poking out the front, our chrome indicate, um, chrome wipers and our uh, chrome, chrome mirrors and stuff. Uh, and yeah, once the front and stuff goes back on, it's going to look pretty damn sick. And yeah, quickly just to show both doors up now because uh, we got both sides working as they uh, needed to. Um, Yeah, it gives you an idea. I think the angle of this one's ever so slightly further out, so we need to uh, maybe do some adjustment on this one to either bring it out or bring this one further in. Um, but anyway, minor details that we can get onto, and then uh, yeah, if we come in here and just flip the old lights on, then what we should find is there yeah, we go. Rear lights all wired in now as well, which is cool. So uh, middle two are brake lights. Outer two are kind of like the, the sort of brake, like the sort of rear running lights or whatever you want to call them. Um, and then as we showed the previous episode, our indicators, as you can just see there, are uh, flush into the uh, bumper on either side. So there's one down on this left hand side, just here, one on the right hand side, number plate bracket in the middle. We still need some of the wiring sorted, uh, but that's then going to have our plate on the back and then at the moment we've got <laughs> basic exhaust pipe as you can just see here our little pea shooter um, and that's literally just to get it through an MOT before we send it off to infinity exhaust to do something mental with these uh, nice big apertures in the rear some nice big pipage coming out of the uh, rear there and then yeah our little uh, button for opening the boot um, for when we get onto our big boot install but yeah I think uh, yeah definitely looking pretty cool with the doors and stuff and then uh, especially with the interior as it is as well looking pretty damn smart i think you'll agree um with all the bits and then as soon as the cubbyhole and everything goes on in here it's going to be pretty nicely finished off and we need to get a new cover for this somehow i don't know we need something silver or chromey i think so there we go guys that's a load of updates really on uh, what i've been up to on the uh, 106 project uh obviously you can see fair amount's been going on at the moment which is great so I've uh, been bashing through all the stuff that I need to do to get it to the point now where uh, we can send it for an MOT. So, uh, brake flush required. Uh, got to stick on a couple of reflectors on the back because the lights that are in it don't have reflectors, so it needs some separate ones. Um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, brake bleeder, to say. And then uh, we are pretty much ready to go once I get the fenders and stuff back on now. So, um, yeah pretty damn close to be honest now that we've got it running again after all of that hassle with the uh, Clifford alarm system so much much happier place now um, which is great so anyway cheers all for watching and I will catch you guys on the next one see you later